Welcome. This film was produced by the Commission of Tank Cleaning. The CTC is the umbrella organization for Belgian tank cleaners. Over the next 15 minutes, this film will provide information about the risks and the preventive measures applied for the cleaning of tankers, tank containers, bulk trucks and IBCs. Before entering the workplace, you must always be aware of the emergency installations in place. You must know where the following are located. Emergency stops, emergency and eye showers, the first aid post, evacuation points, and any ATEX zones. ATEX zones are zones where there is an increased risk of explosion. In addition, you must always be aware of the applicable safety regulations in the workplace, including standard personal protective equipment, the ban on smoking and naked flames, rules concerning GSM use, and other rules specific to the company. Once you're fully aware of these emergency installations and company regulations, you'll be ready to start work. We wish you every success. When a driver signs in to have their truck or container cleaned, it's important that we receive the necessary information to carry out the job safely and correctly. The driver therefore needs to fill in a signing in form, which must contain the following information. What was the last product to be transported? Is there any residual product? Is the tank pressurized with nitrogen or CO2? In addition, the driver also needs to fill in a number of items that provide the necessary information to correctly complete the cleaning operation at the operational and administrative level. Based on this information, the job order can be drawn up, which is handed over to the cleaning operator. It is also important that the driver is informed of the internal safety instructions. When the truck drives into the cleaning installation, it's important that you maintain eye contact with the driver and that you stay out of the truck's way. Calmly guide the driver to the right spot and give them clear instructions when they need to stop. Make sure that the tanker or container is in the right place, in other words, just below the access system in place. When the truck is parked in the right spot, Give the driver the necessary instructions to immobilize their truck and prepare it for cleaning. Before you start cleaning, you need to carefully go over the following items on the job order. Has the correct truck or container entered? Which product was in the tank? And, if applicable, which compartment needs to be cleaned? The product determines the washing program and the necessary personal protective equipment to be worn. The standard PPEs are different for every company, but generally consist of protective clothing with long trousers and long sleeves, safety shoes or boots, and gloves. Depending on the company, the equipment can be supplemented with a safety helmet, safety goggles, and ear protection. Certain products may require additional PPEs, such as a face shield for corrosive materials, and a filter mask for toxic substances. Depending on the company regulations and the product, the tank may need to be earthed. This is usually done by making an electrical connection between the tank to be cleaned and the installation using an earthing cable. 
The tank must always be accessed via an access system which has personal or collective fall protection. Some companies opt for individual fall protection. This consists of a harness and a fall arrest block. Other companies opt for collective fall protection in the form of a retractable railing which surrounds the operator when he or she enters the tank. Before opening the cover of the tank, check whether or not the tank is pressurized. This is done by carefully opening the pressure relief valve. Large quantities of hazardous vapors can be released in a short space of time. As such, make sure that no body parts are in the vicinity of released gases. Always keep a safe distance and stand away from the flow of the fumes. Depressurization can generate significant noise. Wearing hearing protection is therefore necessary in most cases. When the tank has been depressurized, you can open the cover. To do this, always loosen the clamps on the side of the hinge first. Also make sure that your hand does not get crushed between the heavy cover and the edge of the access hole, or between the cover and the top of the tank. Now you can check from above if there is any residual load. Make sure that you always use an ATEX light source for highly flammable products. If a residual load is detected, it must be removed in accordance with the applicable regulations of the company. Make sure that the container is correctly labelled. Carefully open the exhaust valve and make sure that you're not standing in front of the valve. Even when there is no residual load, product can still be ejected from the exhaust pipe and it's therefore recommended opening the valve while standing next to the exhaust. If the valve gets blocked, stop the procedure and notify the responsible person. The valve will then be unblocked in accordance with the prescribed procedure of the company. The valve is left open so that the rinsing water can rapidly drain from the tank during cleaning. Everything is now ready to hang the washing heads in the open access holes. This is either done manually or via a hoist. In both cases, you must ensure that washing heads are carefully guided into the opening. There is always a risk of impact, crushing and falling. It is also important that the washing head does not hit the edge of the opening or cover. This is a fragile instrument and therefore highly susceptible to damage. If you need to close the access hole cover, do it carefully. The cleaning program will now be started. Make sure that the right washing heads are activated. If a washing head starts and it's not hanging in the tank container or tanker, the entire washing installation will be covered in hot water under high pressure, a very dangerous situation. If additional equipment such as connecting pieces or other elements need to be cleaned in addition to the tank, these must be secured in place. If you fail to do this, they can fly around under the pressure of the water and cause damage to people and infrastructure. For foodstuffs, it is also important that the connecting pieces are not cleaned on the floor. Hoses are usually cleaned using a special high-pressure hose. Make sure that this hose does not unexpectedly shoot out. If this happens, the surrounding area will be covered in water under high pressure. In general, when using high pressure, care should be taken to ensure that the water jet does not come into contact with anything other than the tank. Water at a pressure of 50 to 200 bar is used in the cleaning installations as standard. This is sufficient pressure to cause physical injury. The eyes in particular are vulnerable. As such, make sure that the eyes are protected at all times when using high pressure. Even if the hose were to shoot out for whatever reason, a large amount of energy is released, which causes the hose to fly around at high speed. This can cause serious damage and injury. In addition to the use of high pressure during cleaning, steam is also used in many cases. 
This means that you can be exposed to temperatures up to 160 degrees Celsius, depending on the steam pressure. This immediately causes very severe burns. As such, always be careful and regularly check the condition of the hoses and couplings used. Exposure not only to the load itself, but also to certain cleaning products used, can pose a risk. Ensure that you're aware of these at all times. You can identify dangerous products by the labeling on tanks, barrels and IBCs. There are two possibilities in this respect. The ADR symbols for transport or the CLP labels when storing and using these products. Flammable products can be recognized by the flame, which for ADR is on a red background and for CLP on a white background, surrounded by a red diamond. Toxic products can be recognized by a skull, in both cases applied on a white background. Corrosive products can be recognized by the specific symbols on a white background. These three hazard categories are the most important you will come across. There are also ADR and CLP symbols for oxidizing substances and substances which are dangerous to the environment and also CLP symbols for harmful and irritating substances and for substances that are health hazards. After cleaning, you must return to the tank with the necessary fall protection and carefully remove the washing heads from the access hole. If a hoist is used, it's very important to make sure that the washing head does not get stuck behind the edge of the access hole. Due to the high pulling force, there could be significant damage. The cleaned tank must then be dried. A commonly used method is to blow the tank dry with dried compressed air. This generates a lot of noise and it is therefore recommended to wear hearing protection. Using compressed air can also release a large amount of energy whereby the compressed air hose flying around can result in serious physical and or material damage. A variation of this is to use a steam evacuation system in the form of a hollow cone which is connected to the compressed air system and which allows the steam to be blown out through a venturi effect. There is much less noise with this method. Another method is to dry the tank with heated and dried air. There are specific installations in this respect. As no compressed air is used in this method, there are no associated risks. After cleaning, you also need to check that the tank is clean, dry and odorless. This is usually done by inspecting the access hole with a light source. Once again, use the fall protection for this. It is sometimes necessary to enter the tank. If this is the case, you must follow the procedure for entering a confined space. This procedure is different for every company, but they all have one thing in common. It must first always be determined whether it is safe to descend into the tank. In most cases, both oxygen and LEL have to be measured in the tank. The meters used to measure these values need to be calibrated. The meters generally indicate this. In exceptional cases, moving parts such as agitators and pumps need to be cleaned. These must have their power source switched off and be secured before you enter the tank. If the pump needs to be running during cleaning to get it 100% clean, this should be done at the lowest possible speed. It is also important to keep a sufficient distance from the moving parts of the pump. Throughout the cleaning process, there must be good communication between the cleaning operators and the drivers, so that everyone knows where everyone else is at all times. That way, we can avoid misunderstandings, such as the truck leaving too soon or the washing installations and pumps being set up too soon. It is also necessary to ensure that the truck does not move throughout the cleaning process. Wheel chocks can be used in this respect, or the truck's handbrake can be applied and the driver can get out of the cabin, etc.
After the check, close the covers in accordance with the applicable regulations, step off the tank and remove the access system. Make sure that this access system is no longer connected to the truck when it drives away. Otherwise, it can cause significant damage to the installation and the truck or container. Also make sure that the earthing, loose hoses, drying hoses, etc. are disconnected. If the tank has been cleaned in accordance with the job order, the completed documents will be returned to the driver and he or she can drive away. After the truck or container has left the cleaning installation, the cleaning line is cleaned up so that we can receive the next customer. This film should have given you a general idea of the cleaning process and the risks you may be confronted with during this process. There is exposure to hazardous products, danger of falling, steam, air and water under pressure, moving parts and access to confined spaces. In addition, there are typical risks such as cutting, crushing, tripping and falling. Cleaning tanks is therefore a process in which you must always proceed with care and strictly observe the applicable safety regulations and procedures. However, every cleaning company is different and has its own procedures, methods and regulations. It is therefore important that you're aware of these company-specific regulations before you start cleaning. We wish you every success in a pleasant and above all safe working environment. <laughs>